Okay, cool. So here we are. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Asia, and good evening, the West. Good evening, America. Good evening, uh, Europe. Welcome to Sunday Night Live. Uh, it's not as funny as Saturday Night Live, but it is pretty funny. In, uh, <clears throat> some of the stuff here is pretty funny uh, in a tragic, tragic way. So, I mean, it's funny in that we're a lot, we, <clears throat> we continue to allow it to happen. Uh, I don't know if we call it funny. Let me change the word. It's not funny. Saturday Night Live's funny. We're not funny. Sorry about that. We're not funny at all. But anyway, good, good, good greetings to you all from wherever you are. And I um, hope you can hear me well. Sent a request to be in your live video. What does that mean? Good morning. Greetings. Okay. Shall we get into it? We got people here. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> Anyway, hey, there we come. All right, Australia, always, yes, Be beautiful. Chicago, South Carolina, Florida, yay. Yay, wow, was that, what? Oh, Pennsylvania, I thought I saw Russia. I was going to say, wow, well, Russia. Um, um, anyway. Okay, so let's get started. Um, some questions today. First of all, um, you know, uh, the same, the same people that hinder our uh, our our ability to speak freely, um, <clears throat> are the same people that um, are. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the same people that 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 prevent us from speaking freely about um, uh, the geopolitical situation, what's going on, and all that sort of thing, and. All that those same people uh, run the regulatory uh, agencies and the regulatory boards. And just to let you know what those are is that um, when we talk about law, they call law statutory law. That means, I mean, most of the law, the law we talk about, that means there's a statute, there's a law, and then if you break the law, you broke the law. Okay, that, uh, that's statutory law. And then there's what they call regulatory law, which is from professional societies. And I hate that word professional. What the hell does professional mean? Huh? I'm a professional, whatever. Professional, as far as I'm concerned, means you're getting paid for it. So whatever you're doing, you're professional if you're getting paid. I think it has to do with money. Right? But some people distinguish between professions and merely occupations. Anyway, I don't. So anyway, these regulatory agencies... Um, um, basically set the rule the, the what they call laws but they're not the regulations for profession so the legal profession has theirs and the medical profession has theirs and so we are kept in line by the medical boards otherwise we lose our license right and um you know what 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 is a license You want to know what a license is? Uh, a license is when you're given the authority to do that which would otherwise be illegal. Hmm. Bizarre. Very bizarre. And they made it up. They made it up. They have to have a license to drive. Anyway. Um, a license. Anyway, whatever. Whatever. Um, anyway, it's all Rockefeller, okay? They call it regulatory agencies, but you can change the word regulatory with Rockefeller agencies. And that's that's it. So pretty much we have a Rockefeller agencies running the medical world, and we're really restricted on what we can say and what we can do and things like that. And so, uh, 
in order to be uh, once once a doctor, this is you all need to find yourselves a doctor who um, uh, has. It's a form of tech. So, yeah, license, another way to make money. Exactly, Kathy. Um, uh, uh, you know, if you can find a doctor who uh, can remember, well, maybe they never did. But anyway, who, uh, who originally had the idea that they wanted to help people, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's is that possible. Where is that? These Japanese medications, anyway. Um, uh, if you can find a doctor who did that, whose whose ethics are that they wanted, they really want to help people, right? Then they'll find that what you wind up doing, because what I what I found that I had to do is I had to move, I had to move from New York to Arizona and then here, you know, because we have to move around because. Uh, uh, I give you one example. Did you know that it's prohibited? A doctor is prohibited from providing care to someone they care about. I don't know if that sounds weird to you, but that is like triple weird to me. You can provide care to people you don't care about. But if you care about someone, you can't provide care. So therefore, we're not really talking about providing care when we say we're providing care. What are we doing? We're providing established uh, uh, protocols and algorithms. That's what it is. Anyway, um, so these regular, uh, so anyway, so I'm limited. So I'm really, I, I, told, I, I told my staff today, I'm going to definitely get a, a rumble channel so I can just be free and talk and all that kind of thing. And then I think what we can do then is we can maybe have a live session where I can actually take, instead of sending questions in, we'll actually just answer questions live and spontaneously. It'll be cool. I think it'll be a lot better. Um, and then, cause I have to, I have to be careful here so that I don't get deplatformed or whatever the hell it's called. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The disunited States of America. You remember we used to be united. Used to be united. I think. Okay, so now let's get into uh, our questions because a lot of questions this month, this week. And I really apologize. I didn't get. I. 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 I, I didn't get to. Um, where are they? There they are. Okay, let me move this over here. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. Now, what I wanted to do real quickly is just kind of run through the ones that uh, there were questions from from last week's live. Yeah, just let's, let's that we didn't get to. Okay, so here, what test would you recommend for an overall check out of our bodies to see if uh, if there are chronically fermenting cells developing? There's, uh, uh, you know. Um, okay. There is no, there are, there is no specific, but what you can look at is some different kinds of enzymes. I specifically, I would get an LDH. I would get a ferritin to iron, a ferritin and an iron, and then look at the ratio, make sure that the ferritin was not five times more than the iron level. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I would get a, uh, uh, a CRP and a galactin-3, because those are measures of inflammation. And we all know that the underlying physiology that's going on in these kinds of chronically fermenting situations um, is, yeah, 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 I, I agree. Rumble is great. Um, um, uh, it has the underlying physiology is chronic inflammation. So if you can see chronic inflammation. But even more than that, even more, you know, and what's implied in this question is really, and all, and all questions really, is how can I stop? How can I stop making chronically fermenting cells? How do I stop doing that? Uh, and that really, it really involves coming back to earth. I mean, that sounds maybe overly simplistic, but it seriously is exactly the truth. 
you know, we're 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 going to build a healing center here in, um, you know, in Phuket, and uh, you know, I want it to be away from everything. I'd like people when they check in, you you know, we're only I'll have one area where you can go use your uh, Wi-Fi, where you can go use your phone or computer, one, like one time a day. But the rest of it, no, and just be there and take our shoes off and reconnect with the earth, because the reason we're sick. Is because look at where we live. Look around you. Unless you're lucky enough to live in a rural setting, and I know some of you do. I mean, I know some of you are. We've I've consulted with you, and you're really fortunate. Some of you live on wonderful, beautiful organic farms, and uh, somebody I know they grow a whole. They grow organic soybeans that they sell to Japan. Um, another lady lives up in the, in the in the mountains, and so it's just really a lot of you had really really have wonderful. Uh, uh, place, places to live and you're not stuck. But the vast majority of people are in urban settings and situations that they can't get out of right now. Um, and anyway, um, okay, uh, that's a long question, Kathleen. I'll look at that. Thank you. Um, in a minute. Um, but anyway, so what I was going to say is that the, 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 real, the real thing is um, doing as much as you can to, to approximate what a natural life would be. And a natural life would be going to bed early. It would be getting up early without an alarm clock because you went to bed early. Uh, where you, and it's the holy hours. In every religion, every religion I've ever studied, known members of the holy hours are 4 a.m. around there. I mean, uh, we're talking about the uh, Franciscan monks in South America somewhere and the Shaolin, Shaolin da Taoist monks. Uh, the uh, Swamis and Gurus in India uh, and every place. Native American. You know, the holy hours are the early hours. Uh, it's a special time of the day. If you're getting, if you're just waking up from a beautiful, wonderful sleep, if you're just getting home, then it's not the same. Yeah, we used to, we also used to be free. We used to be free. And it's going to get worse, kids. I can call you kids because you're almost, all every one of you is younger than me. Almost everyone. I met a few of you that are older than me, and that's good to have a few seniors around. But anyway, it's going to get worse. It's getting worse. So really, get ready. Yeah, organic soybeans. You know, uh, 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 the person is. That's got. They've got a whole farm, and the Japanese come every year, and they check it, and they look at the soil. I mean, Japanese are serious about three things: rice, tea, and soybeans. Serious. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. They're there. They have a link. I'll have, I have to talk to them and find out. Uh, but anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> hey. Hey, Ted. Um, so uh, anyway, so the whole idea of coming. So, so what the healing center is going to be mostly is coming back to Earth, uh, taking silent walks in the morning. Walks where you're in where you're you're in nature, which kind of that's where we, that's what we are. That's what we are. We're, we're natural beings. You know, when we die, this body turns back to earth. When a dog dies, its body turns back to earth. Okay, so earthlings. Anyway, got to, that, that, that's the main thing. So living that way, eating human food. eating By eating food that's not cooked, you're eating it. It's alive. It's earth. It's, it's like putting your, it's like grounding. You want to ground with your feet. You take your shoes off. You want to ground with your whole body. Eat the tomato, not the tomato sauce. Okay? Because it's still, you're getting all the electrons. You're getting all that life, life, energy. This is what we're looking at. And when the energy is gone, the game is over. Period. Whatever the problem is. You got energy. You jump out of bed. You're fine. You barely get out of bed. You're not fine. Energy, energy, energy. Period. Now, how do we get energy and keep it? That's the question. And that's what we do by living a life that 
uh, uh, recognizes that. And that's a life that lives uh, according to our, uh, that satisfies all of our biological requirements. And to satisfy all of our biological requirements, we have to remember what our biology is. And our biology is, is that we happen to be earthlings. And we need air, we need earth, we need wind, we need plants. And you know what? If we're not there, if we weren't lucky enough, blessed enough to grow up in that kind of environment, get out. You can't. Look, I got out. I got out when I was 19. I had no money. And I hitchhiked around the world. I did, you know, I, 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 did, I, I spent two, three years with no money. Just did it. It's a different world now. You can't do that now. But, but the point is this. Just because you're born in, uh, you know, uh, the gulag, you don't have to stay in the gulag. Get what, whatever you have to get, get out. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Don't have to believe me, but I'm just telling you. Um, anyway, um, um, but I want, we got to get our feet back on the ground. We got to get back to being earthlings, okay? Um, and, and we know that animals, wild animals, do not get degenerative conditions. They do not get chronic inflam inflammatory conditions. And the reason they don't is because their lives are compatible with their biological requirements. So that's it. It's, it's, it's so simple that you, nobody wants to hear it. Everybody wants, I know what everybody's waiting for. Can I take this? What about this? Can I do this? And there is no this. There's many thises called thems. Yeah. But there's no this. There's no this. I had someone the other day telling me uh, that they're doing all this stuff. I mean, they had the root canals removed. They had uh, dietary cleanses, all, you know, all the things, vitamin C. And then they think that they, they got better because of this one thing. Because it came near the end. They got this one extra thing, treatment therapy. Um, on that, uh, an alternative holistic therapy. Uh, and then they said, well, that's it. That, that, that's why I got well, because of that. It's not. Try just that and see what happens. Nothing. Try just one of anything. Nothing. There's no it that's going to fix you because you're not broken. What you're doing is adapting. Your body is adapting to. <clears throat> uh, your body is adapting to the fact that we are uh, uh, not satisfying its needs. And so therefore it has to adapt. These adapt adaptations are what people call diseases. New York, yeah, I, I was in New York, Sandra. I was there. During, a great time, during really good times when it was good, really good to be there. But uh, anyway, so that, that my, so my, my question, is, so my answer to your question is what tests, I would do the LDH, I would do the ferritin to iron ratio. I would do the uh, galactin-3. I would do the um, CRP, C-reactive protein, which tells you if you have a, a, a chronic inflammation. I would do those kinds of things like that. Um, and then, of course, you've got to, uh, you know, you do a general chemistry. you got to see, are your liver okay? Is your kidney okay? Uh, are your kidneys good? Is your liver okay? Uh, you want, are you electrolyte? You know, are you basically metabolically sound? Get your fasting glucose. Very important fasting glucose should be three, three. And most people, most Americans are 12, 15, 18. I think, I think, I think, I think they even allow uh, in, the, in, the, in the normal range up to 24, or 26, or 28, or something like that, normal. Now, remember, normal has nothing to do with health. Okay? So the normal American, the normal European, the normal Thai, Chinese, because it's pretty much Japanese, Korea. It's pretty much all the same now because the West sadly, tragically has metastasized around the world. And so everybody's busy being uh, following. Uh, hey, Dana from. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yucky Valley. Hi, David. Uh, everybody's busy uh, following Americans who don't know where they're going. Really, you know, I'm shocked. I got to say this. I'm shocked. I always thought that, and I, I hate to go with. The, I hate to go on these tangents, but I, 
It just comes to my mind. So please excuse me for one second. But I always thought that, and I grew up in America, and I'm thinking, well, you know, um, uh, you know, when you think about what happened in Nazi Germany and you think places like that, it could never happen in America because Americans are armed. And in fact, it's in, it's one of, it's, it's, it's part of the, um, uh, the, uh, the amendments to the Constitution, right? The Constitution by itself, remember, was not very much in our favor, right? It's the, uh, I think it was Thomas Jefferson that uh, insisted before they signed that they come up with these amendments to make it a, a good document, right? And it's these amendments that we really hold uh, dearly, right? Free speech, uh, freedom to bear arms, freedom of religion, things like that. So I thought, you know, we bear arms, stuff like that. No one's ever going to do it. And then I look around at what's happening around the world, and I see that we're, 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 we're all the tough Americans. Come on, where are we? Where are we? I thought we were armed. I thought we were, like, ready. No one's going to take us over. You know, where we're, you know where they are? Eating nuggets and playing video games. Yeah. So the point is, is, like, yeah. <clears throat> Anyway, so, um, but those are the tests I would do. But more than the any test <clears throat> I would do is I would do, I would, you know, and the other ones you can do, you can do heavy metal tests, you can do environmental toxins tests, you can do all that, but you can, but you can do, you can understand what I've learned over the years is I've never met, I've never tested anybody who doesn't have heavy metal burden. No, I don't. Why test it? As our friend Robert Zimmerman, a.k.a. Bob Dylan, said, you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. So why spend your money on doing a test to find out what you already knew? You just go outside, see which way the wind's blowing. Okay? Um, we don't have to do tests. In fact, you don't have to do anything. I want to do a mineral test on my hair to find out if I'm what I'm lacking in. Well, instead of trying to find out what you're lacking in, just eat healthy. Oh, my gosh. And what if you find out you are lacking in... I don't have enough selenium. I don't quite have enough zinc and I have too much of this. What should I do? Eat healthy. Huh? okay. Well, what if I have BRCA2? What should I do? Uh, eat healthy. What if I don't have BRCA2? Uh, eat healthy. Huh. So it always comes down to the same thing. There's not another way around it. There's not another thing. I don't know what we're looking for. Are we looking for a way to not do walk the journey? Is, is there another way to get there besides going from here to there? No. The way you get there, you know, the road is narrow. You heard that? It's biblical. It's narrow. It means that you've got to live the way you were designed. And guess what? We don't have wings. So, you know, don't step off of 10-story building, okay? You know, being aware of our anatomy and our physiology and being aware of what of, it allows us to understand um, uh, what we what our what, what our activities should be, what our food should be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's uh, I mean, I got off on a thing on a thing. But uh, uh, anyway, so some more questions last week. Uh, what do you recommend for a team to treat worms? Uh, you know, the same thing for everybody. Right. It depends if you're how big, how little you are. Um, in terms of dosages. And then somebody on TikTok was saying that this guy, I think they meant me, right? Am I this guy? Yeah. Okay. So this guy doesn't, um, uh, never tells us what, how much to take and what to take. That's not true. I'm almost every week. If somebody only watches those little clips, whoever the editor is, he's just clipping out a small part, is not going to get the whole thing. But I always say, uh, 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 usual you know you got to find out specifically for you but usually uh ivermectin 12 milligrams three times a day defend bendazole 222 milligrams three times a day or membendazole 500 milligrams two times a day praziquantel 600 milligrams three times a day and or niclosamide uh, 500 milligrams three times a day then you need some antifungals like diflucan 100 milligrams twice a day uh, nystatin, 500,000 units in a little thing, uh, two times a day. Okay. 
but I don't know you particularly as a young teen, as a teen. I don't know if you mean a young teen or, you know, because a, a teen is a big range. You know, you could be 12 or 13. Is a teenager 13, 12? 13. Oh, I think you have to have the word teen in. Uh, I mean, the, the suffix has to be teen, right? So 13. So 13 is the first one. And then and up to 19. So that's a big range. So depending on your body size and all that, depending on how much. So, uh, but they get, but, and you can't just treat worms with one thing. You got to use multiple. And I saw another question earlier. You got to use multiple over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. Because these guys are, the reason they're called parasites is they successfully avoid being killed and detected. So they're going to, you're not going to find them. Don't even try to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, okay, another question. What about tamoxifen? We've talked about that before. Tamoxifen, can food replace it? Soy replaces it. Uh, flax replaces it. Green tea replaces it, right? Not only replaces it, but it's better. It's better. It doesn't have the side effects. Uh, can you heal a tooth cavity? A tooth cavity, you know, you got to really clean it out. You got to get, you got to, you got to clean it out and then fill it up with something. And you got to go to a biological dentist, a biological dentist, a, a certified biological dentist, not a regular dentist because they're as uh, absurd as the regular doctors. Okay. Yeah. And I won't get into details again, because I don't want to go off. Okay. But yeah, you can't just heal it otherwise. I mean, you could use, you could get a peroxide and swish it around your mouth several times a day and stuff like that. But once you have a cavity, that means you've got uh, 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 what they're calling car caries. Once you have that, that means it's already into, it's broken through the enamel. And so it's quite, it's kind of uh, a problem. It's a problem. So, and you don't want it to go deep and you don't want to get problems. I would just go to a biological dentist and get it filled with a substance that you're compatible with. All right. Um, Oh, good one, Julia. Yeah, so Judy said in one of your sessions, tell us what if, what its life is like in Thailand. What does your day look like? Is it very humid? Not it's uh it's humid, uh, warm. Most uh, mo uh, it's there's two seasons, wet and dry. Right now we're in the wet season, uh, but the weather's pretty much the same all year round, around anywhere from about twenty six to uh, thirty eight degrees centigrade and uh, what is that like in the eighties nineties of Fahrenheit uh, occasionally hotter uh, there's one time a year it is um, but my days well they used to be uh, a lot more fun than they are now I don't get a chance to get I'm just doing too much I've just got too much to do I'm just doing too my days are sitting here and I get up every ninety minutes and go do some vigorous movement around and and all that, and uh, and I get my walks across the street on on the on the ocean, the beach in the morning, in the afternoon, and the night. Uh, but that's about it. I can't. I'm not doing much because I have too many consultations, and I and I try. I, I, I gotta I gotta make all these lectures, and I've got to do all. The, it's just a lot of things I got to do. I'm, I'm hoping. I wish I had an assistant. I wish I had someone, uh, or a few someones, um, to help me with it. Anyway, uh but it's, I mean, when I go outside, as soon as I go outside, I'm in palm trees and blue skies and beautiful soft winds and papayas growing and all these, you know, coconuts growing. And you go to the side of the road and you go to the store and you're driving up and there's, there's Thai people with their fruit stands on the side of the road. All this amazing fruit. I mean, just amazing fruit that you can eat. Some you can, I mean, you can eat these ones. I wanted to show you. I was going to bring one. Gosh, they're all gone now. Um. I gotta bring a cut. Maybe next week I'm gonna bring a couple fruits and I'll I'll eat them in front of you because you can eat them because they're not really high glycemic and they're fantastic. But there's that and um, uh, yeah, and everybody's just swati ka swati ka. Everybody's nice. Never heard anyone yell <clears throat> except me uh, in 11 years. Can you say that about too many other places on this planet? No. Uh, uh, anyway, 
Can a person stay on a parasite cleanse while receiving chemo? Yes, 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 and you must. Do you ever crave for pizza or ice cream? Pizza, for sure, crave. Ice cream, nah. Plus, I could always have a soy cream or whatever. Uh, like a soy yogurt or a soy, uh, or, or, or an almond yogurt or, uh, you know, some sort of non- um, dairy yogurt or, or, or that. so that that that's not good. but the pizza stuff you know uh that you know that P, now that you bring it up that might be if i were on death row and they said you're gonna have your last meal hmm. probably be um P, uh well, a few things i would probably be eating for a long time they'd probably be sorry they asked me for that but it would probably be a, a, some pasta, pizza, uh, who knows? Yeah. My last meal. Yeah. Anyway, those cravings don't go away, but you want to develop new cravings. And you want to develop a database in your head of knowledge so that you understand what it's doing. Because as if you understand why, when you're eating this, like how fantastic it is, like, wow. Okay, let's go on. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, what is natto? Natto is fermented soybeans. You can find it in a Japanese grocery. You can find it in a lot of grocery stores too. It's usually in the uh, frozen section or the freezer, uh, the refrigerator section. Natto, so fermented soybeans. How to take what dose of vitamin C all day and sign up? I and sip on. Well, you can get the so. It's just sodium ascorbate. Look online. Sodium ascorbate. Do not pay Jeff Bezos anything ever again. Okay, and don't Google it. Brave it. Don't pay these monsters who are owned by Blackwalk and Van Rockguard. Uh, so, uh, so with vitamin C, that's what you get. You can go online, and there was one that I, uh, that I, uh, I got was. Biontech, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. There's a lot of them, really. You know, it's just pure sodium ascorbate powder. Easy to find. Easy to find. Usually one teaspoon is four to five grams. Thoughts how to how to heal how to heal Crohn's? Okay, well there is no thing as Crohn's. They call it Crohn's because they do a diagnosis by taking a piece of the tissue and looking it under the microscope and saying, aha. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is, as there is no Crohn's. There is a dysbiosis and chronic inflammation. And that's what Crohn's is. That's what ulcerative colitis is. That's what uh, chronically fermenting cells are. Arthritis, that's it. So dysbiosis, very, very important. You got to put in rectally the healthy bacteria and orally the healthy bacteria multiple times a day. And then you've got to eat food that, that make those bacteria grow, which is the food that humans were designed to eat. And by the way, not it doesn't matter. On another session, we'll discuss human food. And I'm happy to have a debate with anyone about our physiology and anatomy because I studied it. And I still study it. By the way, any of you uh, I don't know if I mentioned this last week. I might have, but uh, 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 there's a friend, a uh, friend. He's a dear friend, uh, a, a good, great man. His name is Fred Bishi, B-I-S-C-I. Lives in Staten Island. <clears throat> uh, I met him in the early 2000s. Late in, was it? Did I meet him in the 80s? Or, no, I met him in the early 2000s. Anyway, uh, and he was kind of the guy that helped, taught me uh, the transition from eating uh, denatured, uh, thermally denatured food um, that also, aka uh, cook, cooked food, how to eat uh, uncooked food and, and um, all that. Anyway, his name is Fred Bishi. He's uh, been 100% raw vegan for 62 years. He's 92, 
and his mind is and body, you know, he's amazing. You can find him online. There's another lady. What's her name? 80. She's 80 years old. She's 82 years old, 84 years old. She's she looks like she's 40. She's been eating this way for a long. I mean, I have a lot. Donna Peroni. I don't know if anybody knows her, but she's in New York. She's uh, one of my first. Uh, she was my first health uh, healthcare coordinator at my clinics in New York. Um, she has a place called Gravity in in, the, in this in the village, uh, where she uh, does colon hydrotherapy and all that. She's been leading raw food groups for decades. She again, she's another woman that looks extremely young and healthy, vibrant, sharp, all that stuff, eats just human food. Um, you know, all these oxalates, oh my God. Oxalate, I mean, let's, let's, shall we call Fred Bishi and ask him how dangerous these oxalates are? You know, these oxalates, man, you gotta watch out for the oxalates. There's oxalates. Anything green is gonna have oxalates, you know? And those oxalates, mm, not true. Not only is it not true, it's part of the disinformation. And anybody who's talking about it has not done the research. Do you know how oxalate stones form? Do you know? I'm not talking to any of you, all the you, you know that are cool. I'm talking about you that are putting out this disinformation, misinformation. This is the kind of thing I would hear on CNN. Hmm. You know what the studies happen to show? Oddly enough, that eating the oxalates has nothing to do with whether or not you get oxalate stones. Oddly enough. Turns out it has to do with the urine pH. It has to do with the urinary concentrations of both calcium and oxalates. It has to do with uh, uh, the hyd hydration status. Do you know, and you can ask your veterinarian if you don't, if you doubt me, do you know one of the things you got to be careful with if you have a dog or a cat, I mean, or a cat, not a dog, cat, is if you're giving your cat raw meat, raw flesh, they have an increased incidence of oxalate stones. Oh my God. No, meat, dead flesh, dead flesh is. The answer, I can't believe how many people are, are telling me that. I can't, I can't, I, I, I talk, I, there was a guy that was sent me this long thing and he, he, he now eats no plants. I, I mean, I'm not, I, I wish I, I wish I were kidding. And I also wish I could imagine what it would be like to eat no plants, only corpse. To be a hundred percent corpse eater. And he is. So. You know what that tells me? If I if I if somebody's doing that and they're alive, it reminds me of the the people that are eating fast food all day long. People are eating McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, whatever they are. I, I don't, uh, there are other ones too, right? <clears throat> uh, Arby's or whatever, whatever. Uh, three times a day, and they're still alive. Because we know these not only don't have any nutrition, they have anti-nutrition. So the question is, how is it happening? The only answer I can come up with is I guess we really don't even need to eat. And it's glory to God. You know, because in spite of what we do, we're still around. Most of us. I mean, in spite of what we do. I mean, it's crazy. You got people smoking and doing coke all day and uh, uh, eating, uh, I don't know, I, stuff that they eat. Anyway, my mind-boggling, mind-boggling. My mother-in-law is becoming thin. Should she still fast during chemo? Well, she's, I don't know why she's, I don't know what else they're doing with your mother-in-law. That's a shame. But chemo, I mean, chemo, the chemo kills. 
I got to show. I, w- I wish I could sh- p- pull up some articles. Right, it doesn't take long. It's not hard. Go into a search engine and put in paradoxical effects of chemotherapy. You're going to see an article. Yes, it gets rid of the primary tumor, but I'm sorry, it causes metastasis that become that 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 do the person in. That was the whole Joe Tippin story. You remember the Joe Tippin story? He went to MD Anderson. I I get lost for words. And we went to MD Anderson. Anderson, what did they do? They had small cell lung cancer. They put them on chemo. Ah. Why? Well, the algorithm told them to do it. What is an algorithm? Basically, it's consensus by who? By whom? Uh, I guess you could, t- to sum it up into one word, I'd say Rockefeller. How's that? Got it? Okay. You can call it many things American Society of Clinical Oncology, Rockefeller. So they gave him chemo and got the tumor went away. He developed metastasis so much that they said, I'm sorry, I think you should go home and join hospice and die. That's what they said. So he said, you I all know the story. I'm telling you, I'm, I mean, just to remind you, his friend was a veterinarian. He said, I don't know why, but when we give this fenbendazole to the dogs with worms and they have cancer, it goes away. He goes, I'll try it. That was 2017. He's still around. He's still around. But that's what the high dose chemo. So if your mother in law is doing it and she's thin, it's because they're poisoning her. But to get the least, to minimize the side effects of high dose chemo, you fast like two or three days, two days before the chemo, during the chemo, and the day or two after. If you can do that. And since they do this high dose chemo every three or four weeks, you can do something like that. Um, but um, the um, there's research, I didn't make it up. Okay, there's research about this. Okay, fasting on water. There's only one fast, water. Okay, juice is not a fast. Juice is a liquid diet. Okay, got it? Fast means no nutrients. Fast means no nutrients. Juice is tons of nutrients. Juice is a feast. Okay, different. Okay, so the water, you do the water fast. Why? Because what happens? When you're doing the water fast, you're actually protecting the non-fermenting cells, okay? Because they go into a very powerful mode. It makes them stronger. And for the fermenting cells, it makes them weaker. So what happens? The fermenting cells have, uh, are, more, are more preferentially targeted by the chemo. And the other ones are stronger. So the side effects are minimal to none. So you got to talk your mom, you know, your mother-in-law. Um, and she's got to be eating... When she does eat, she should be eating human food, all sorts of stuff. For anybody who's gotten under the spell of that system in there, if you're under the spell, you're in trouble. You got to get out of the spell somehow. Uh, anyway, so uh, 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 I, I got to get past you guys. I got to get past. Too many. You got too many. There's too many questions. I got to do some. I do. Do. Do you agree broccoli sprouts clear our bodies of benzene? Ah, well, okay, anyway. Uh, let me make that the last one from this section because I got to go. I got to find that other section. I got to do some other sections, the website section I want to do. But um, does benzene, does, do broccoli sprouts clear the body of benzene? Now, the, the, it's, it's a good question to ask because benzene is just a, um, it's a chemical that causes leukemia. You know, my myelogenous leukemias. That's what it does, because it gets into the body and then it goes to the liver. The liver changes it. Now, just to remind you about the liver. Okay, so um, uh, how it works. You know, the there's okay. There's two phases of, of liver detoxification. The first phase is when the uh, it's called the oxidative phase, basically. And so you eat something, or you, or you, or you something goes in through your colon because when it gets into the liver, the first thing it does is oxidize it. And that means it, the reason it's doing that is it's adding electrons to it or it's t- taking an electron away. But by taking an electron away, you're making it now water soluble. 
Because the idea is, you know, with these toxins, if you can make them water soluble, then you can get them out of the body because they can go out through your pee and in your feces. Yeah. So that's the first step. So the first step that happens is it becomes benzene oxide. So when it becomes benzene oxide, what happens? That goes to the bone marrow and causes leukemia. It's, it's going to be a problem. So, the, so what we call these are toxic intermediates. So something goes through the first phase of detoxification of the liver. It doesn't get completely dealt with. So then it can go around and cause problems or it can stay in the liver and cause liver problems. That's why we have phase two. And phase two is the uh, uh, conjugation phase where you, it sticks another molecule on this, of, of this one and so that it can get out of the body, right? And there are different kinds of, of, of uh, intermediate, uh, there are different kinds of parts of the, uh, of the phase two, right? There's sulfation, glucuronidation, glutathione, acetylation, and gly glycylation. You know, there, there, there's different aspects of it. And it's just, they're just different ways of adding another molecule onto these intermediates, right? Um, and phase two is down. And, you know, and phase two is known, you know, glutathione S-transferase. We all, we all know about glutathione S-transferase because we all know that coffee enemas are helpful in that regard. And that's what coffee enemas do. They get in, you absorb the, you absorb the kawahal and the kafakal from the coffee and it goes, gets, it goes into your, into the veins of your colon that go up into the portal vein, which goes into your liver and stimulates glutathione as transferase, which helps phase two. What else helps phase two? Big time, more than anything else in the, on the planet, cruciferous vegetables. And the king is broccoli. And the broccoli sprouts, one handful is, a, is a, worth like a, a pound and a half, two pounds of uh, broccoli, right? So the answer to your question is yes. By the way, you know, you can, uh, uh, let's see some other questions. Uh, w ways to upregulate, you know, your um, uh, phase two and phase one and all that, you know, is, um, you know, you know, this is, uh, Crucif you know, cruciferous vegetables, the dandelions, uh, and there's just all kinds of stuff. I mean, we could, we could do a whole thing on how to upregulate that. Um, anyway, by the way, you know, when they talk, when people talk about the detox reaction, right? Uh, the detox reaction really is that you've, you've kind of, you've got a really upregulated phase one, but your phase two is not really regulated, which means you're getting sick from a lot of the phase, the, in the toxic intermediates. So before you detox, you should do a lot of things to increase and improve your phase two detoxification. And if you can do that, then when you um, go through your detox, you won't have as many problems. You won't feel as bad. <clears throat> One of my clients has been using an estrogen blocker three years. Out from uh, advised her that I didn't think this was a good thing that we need our hormones. Yeah, I uh, answered you, but you don't mean you, you're talking about Lupron. They give her something that knocks out centrally all of her hormones. No, that's absolutely you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And uh, you know, I don't, you know, um, yeah, as, as I said, soy, flax, you've got to read about it so you'll know, so you'll feel comfortable in advising someone. But you got to read about it and understand how powerful these things are. And uh, you don't need, no, you need to have your hormones exactly like you said. You're exactly right. You need to have your hormones. That's why we have them. And they need to be in balance, right? That's the problem. The, it's not hormones aren't bad. Estrogen is not bad. Testosterone is not bad. None of these are bad. There's no good and bad in, in nature. They're either, it's, it's either functional or non functional. You know, it's either, it's going to either <clears throat> uh, uh, improve the situation. Or not improve the situation, not good or bad, right? Because you'd have to say it's both, right? Water is good and bad, right? You go to a flood, the flood zone, not, not not doing too good right there, right? But you put water on the plants and they grow. You drink water and you live. So yeah. you can't say things are good or bad. Things are. Everything is what it is. And uh,
Yeah, uh, doing live blood cell tests. Yeah, they're good. They're good, but you got to really know what you're doing with them because they're really different when you wake up. If you do a live blood cell analysis, you wake up in the morning and do it, or you do it after a meal, or you do it before a meal, or you, you, you know, you can see it because they ch it changes. We because and but it's a good thing, you know, what the live blood cell analysis will show you is that this body is it's like it's it's like it's, it's like having a test tube. Right. You put something in the body, it's going to change the chemistry. Do we, we don't even think about that. We don't realize that. I mean, it's whatever sensor, sensual pleasure you're getting from tasting and smelling and all and chewing and mm, all that stuff. Right. <clears throat> uh, that's great. Then spit it out. Don't swallow it. If it was that, like if it was pizza, chew it and spit it out. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just, you know. Thing is, because if you swallow it, now you're going to have to deal with it, and and that's just it's just it's stuff that cannot be converted into flesh and blood. Therefore, it has to be eliminated. That is the definition of poison, right? It's going to kill you if you don't get rid of it. Um, anyway, so so that's what I wanted to talk to you about was um, yeah, oxidation of of of, of, of uh, bless uh, breast uh, uh, of benzene, right? Now, uh, what else were we talking about here? What other questions? So let's go to the website. The website had some questions. Website, website questions. Website questions. Brenda, you've got to help someone who's got things crawling out of his legs and shoulders and nose. Had the condition for seven years. He's been then denied any kind of care for his problem because infectious disease doctors in the VA system want proof before you come in isn't crawling out of the shoulders kind of proof anyway well i i know i know i know uh yeah they are deeply embedded so he needs to be take, so he took to start taking mebendazole that's good but you got to be taking mebendazole and uh not, uh not necessarily doxycycline but doxycycline is good for all, many other things but mebendazole ivermectin Prosequanto, because remember, there are worms and there are flukes and then there are protozoa. So you got to be taking tinidazole also. So I would say the ivermectin, um, and you got to be doing it at the same time, not one and then another and then another. So the ivermectin, 12 million, three times a day, and mebendazole, and prosequanto, and mycosamide. For this guy, yeah. And three times a day for one month, off a week. And then one month off a week, one month off. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Got to do it. Contact me. Make an appointment. Go to drlody.com and make an appointment. Let's take care of this guy, Brenda. Wait, where, 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 where is the questions here from the website? Website here. Uh, what, what are the lymphocyte? NK cell panels or function tests that someone should get? And what are therapies that could be implemented if abnormal or low? All right, good question. And I, I, and I, most of you uh, that, that have consulted with me will know that, uh, okay, Wanda, I just see you've overdone eating raw garlic, cayenne pepper, lemon water, and your stomach's on fire. Uh, just drink a ton of water right now and just get that, pass it through, dilute it. You need to dilute it. Drink a lot of water and let it pass through and let it get all mixed up. You can do all that. Yeah. You got to just get it. You got to get it out. Get it out. All right. Um, you don't want to necessarily vomit it because it'll, 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 it'll cause your problems with your esophagus and stuff. You just got to get it out. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, so the question was, what is this lymphocyte subset? panel um and it's it's the okay so as we all know there are uh the immune system is made up of what we call white blood cells right we, and we know that all the uh what they call hematopoietic cells which are red blood cells white blood cells and platelets are all produced in the bone marrow right in the in the in the fetus that we make them in our liver then that's kind of stops when you get when you're born and anyway, it becomes gets into the long bones of your body of your of your body. So the bone marrow is uh, you know uh, got a lot of hematopoietic uh, stem cells. 
And it comes from a progenitor stem cell, and then it can divide into three different kinds and go either red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets. Well, the white blood cells are different kinds. Now, uh, they're produced in the bone marrow, and then they they get they leave, they go out into the into the systemic cir circulation, and they have different functions. Okay, and um, so. Uh, when we talk about lymphocytes, we're talking about usually B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells. Those are the three lymphocytes. All right. Now, these are different than what they call the, um, uh, you might have heard of neutrophils or PMNs, right? Or uh, polymorphonuclear nucleosides, nucleosides yeah, but uh, neutrophils, polymorph polymorphonuclear neutrophils, PMNs. Easier to call. They call people call them either polys or neutrophils. They're different. They're not considered lymphocytes. They're polys. <clears throat> and then you have eosinophils, which are involved in allergic reactions. You have basophils, and you have monocytes. And monocytes are uh, they travel through the blood, and then when they leave the blood vessel and go into a tissue, they become what are called macrophages or dendritic cells. Right. And if they're in the brain, they're called glial cells. If they're in the liver, they're called uh, Kempfer cells. You know? So depending on where they're at, they have a different name, but they're still basically macrophages. Okay, but the lymphocytes are T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells. So why do we want to know that? Because that's those are the main... Uh, it, it, it tells us a lot about your immunity. So that's what, what I like to test. I like to look at is, you know, and I don't, you know, they have, they, 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 they have, they call them like, they have a CD number, cluster differentiation. They have a CD number. So CD4, um, uh, CD3 means just T cells in general. CD4 usually means, um, well, there's a few different kinds of lineages of CD4s now on that. And then there's, which are help, usually the helper cells. And you've heard of helper cells because you might've heard of HIV and uh, HIV, if it did, if it really if it really existed as a virus the way they talk about it uh then it, it attacked the helper cells and that's what the whole thing so they were doing these lymphocyte subsets when they were working with people with hiv not that it exists i mean i'm not saying that it exists. and they were looking at the t4 to t8 ratio the t8 are the activated cytotoxic lymphocytes they're trained assassins they've been and they've been given the information about the you got two kinds. You got the naive ones that have been trained, don't yet have a target, and they're waiting for the macrophages and the dendritic cells to get them a target. Um, and then you get the ones who already have a, uh, have a target and going to go get it. So those are the activated. So yeah, T4 and T8. T4 and T8. This is not hard. It's just no, it's just terminology, nomenclature, not a big deal. Don't shut off your head about it. Don't say, oh, I can't know that. You can know that. You do know that. It's not hard to know. Okay, so T48. And so we look at the different ratios. That's what I like to look at. I like to look at the regular, at the different ratios and to see what's going on. And then there's something called T regs. And the T regs are very important. These are uh, part of the T4, which are the helper cells. So the T4 can become the regular ones, or they can become the T regs, or they can become T17 also. Um, but, T, but the T regs are the ones that slow down the immune system. So the immune system doesn't destroy the body right so uh there there are what's necessary for the uh, uh, uh other t-cells to recognize self versus non-self right really important all right so um uh anyway <clears throat> um now with various kinds of tumors uh when they look at the tumor microenvironment in other words the environment in which the tumor is they look at the ratio of the uh, T regs to the T8s, right? Which are with, uh, T8s are the ones that are going to go out and kill. The T regs are going to slow down the immune response. Remember, they're going to slow down the immune response. Well, a lot of chronically fermenting cells send out signals to attract T regs, and they want to get a lot of T regs in the tumor microenvironment. So if you have a lot of T regs, regs stands for regulate, regulatory, regulatory T cells. The T reg, if you have a lot of T regs in the tumor microenvironment, 
what happens? It shuts down the response. So the, 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 one of the ways they look at for in terms of looking at it, um, you know, to give their prognosis, prognosis is something they should not do. They should not predict the future. They should just help people. But when they do, when they do uh, their prognosis, prognosticating, <clears throat> they say that, um, you know, the more, the higher the ratio of T regs to the T8s, the poorer the prognosis. Well, of course, of course, I mean, yeah. So how do you turn off the T regs? That's the big one. How do you turn them off? Because they're going to get turned on, especially if they get near the tumor in the tumor microenvironment. They're going to get turned on and they're going to be attracted to it, right? Well, <clears throat> um, uh, you've heard of AHCC, which is basically a uh, compound from shiitake mushroom, right? This is very good. Also, maitake, shiitake, uh, turkey tail, you know, <clears throat> agaricus blazii. There's a lot of really good mushrooms that do that. They can stimulate T cells like that. But there's also um, actually, and this is called metronomic chemotherapy. There's actually a uh, one of the first um, chemotherapies that was ever discovered in the 40s was uh, cyclophosphamide, also called cytoxin. Uh, and cyclophosphamide, as are all chemotherapies, if you give them in with the, these high doses, they wipe out the immune system. They wipe wipe out every other everything they can. So usually, uh, not, not not a smart thing to do, but nevertheless they do it. But it turns out that in low doses, so high doses would be four hundred milligrams, like per per meter squared of, uh, for uh, to give to a person four hundred or above, right? So, uh, and they find out that if you can do anywhere from like eight milligrams up to 300, which I think is way too high, but maybe about 25 or 50 milligrams a day orally, it actually tells these T-regs to commit suicide and die, number one. It actually increases T-cells. It actually has a really important, fantastic immune stimulatory it's very, very good. Um, another thing is IL-2, interleukin-2, that we, we can use. Interleukin-2 is a chemical cytokine produced by, uh, by white blood cells, usually produced mostly by T cells. Um, and it attracts other cells like macrophages, dendritic cells, and NK cells and stuff like that. It attracts them and it activates them. So it's really, really good. So we use that. You can use low-dose IL-2. You can use low-dose cyto cy cytoxin, uh, low-dose IL-2. And then there's another one. It turns out that IL-2, the studies show that IL-2 actually increases the uh, NK cell numbers, the number of them, uh, but not as much as their, uh, uh, not, it doesn't increase their function as much as IL-12 does. So there's a good paper out on, a few papers on, out on uh, looking at the combination of IL-2 and IL-12. So when for example, when your oncologist is going to talk to you about immunotherapy, they're only they're always talking about checkpoint inhibitors. That's all they talk about. Keytruda and uh, anyway, that's all they're talking about. That's one aspect of the whole thing. But you've got to remember that it's a cascade. It's multiple cells that are that are, that are involved in processes that we will probably not probably we will never comprehend um but anyway you need to kind of activate them all you need to wake them up and then don't tell them what to do they will know what to do they have the intelligence of god they have divine intelligence they will take care of it you gotta just wake them up because remember they get into the tumor microenvironment and they go to sleep so il2 low dose il2 will wake them up thymus and alpha one will increase your t-cells so if you're taking thymus and alpha-1 and IL-2, good papers on that, good research. Remember, you guys, um, if you're first time or 100th time listening, just remember, if I say something, I didn't make it up. Okay? Everything I say is true. 
It's true because I read the papers. It's true because they've done studies. It's true because they've been able to demonstrate it. I don't make things up. Why would I make things up? What? How would that help anybody? How would it help me? Would it help me to make things up? No. So please, some of you guys out there saying, who is this guy? Where are his credentials? Well, you know, gosh, if you're asking those kind of questions, then go sit in the waiting room at MD Anderson. And you can see all their credentials up on the wall. Anyway, um, I've got credentials, and uh, but that doesn't matter. You can have all the credentials in the world and not do much with it. You know? So, I mean, I, I remember, I mean, one of the, um, I think one of the smartest guys I ever met was so smart he couldn't c- communicate with people. I wonder what ever happened to him. I knew him in high school. He was too, he was ridiculously smart. I mean, he had a perfect, perfect memory. You know, you guys ever see that, um, that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, series called uh, Suits? Well, the first couple episodes, they uh, were talking about the one guy in there who, who had a perfect memory, right? He memorized the, <clears throat> the books to take the bar exam or whatever. And that's this guy was. This guy was like ridiculous, but he wasn't able to help people. I know another doctor too, a really, a really smart doctor in Arizona. Uh, but again, socially or interacting with people, it's not helpful. So it doesn't matter how smart you are. What it matters is, do you have the data? Do you, want, do you have the knowledge? And can you help people to understand it in a way that makes sense to them? And that is practical. Um, uh, and can you inspire people to change? My goal is not to tell you about things to take, but my goal is to teach you how to find out about it, how to learn about it, and how to and, and to learn about your body and to remember who you are, what we are, right? We are earthlings and you know, we have biological, psychological, spiritual needs. We all have the same. We're all the same. By the way, there are no Brad Pitts and Angelina Jolie's. They think they're special when they're out in public, but when they get home, they know they're not. They're just like you and me. They have bowel movements. They have fears. They're the same. There's no celebrity. Celebrity thing is whole nonsense, okay? It's part of the consumerism mind that has been foisted, forced down our throats into our into our beings since the turn of the last century, not this century, the last century, right? By the Rockefellers again. That's it. This whole thing. Consumerism, celebrities, and all that. Eh. So we're all the same. We all need not only to eat human food, go to bed early, move around all day, but we need to have healthy relationships. We need to not lie. We need to uh, um, be touched. We need to touch. We need to be appreciated. It's just the way we are. We need to, and we need, we love to love. You know, and uh, we all need that. And we all need our relate. We all need to know that this body and this personality is here for a certain time. And it's, a, it's ephemeral. It won't be here at some point. And that is not who we are. And we know that because you know that aspect of your being that is looking out of your eyes. When you looked in the mirror, when you were four years old, if you ever did, or five years old. That same being is hasn't changed. My, your body, I look at my body, go, whoa, what happened? What happened? But inside is still the same, and it's eternal. And so part of the most important thing to, to learn about uh, when, when you're alive is who that aspect of you is, and that's the part. Okay, so anyway, and how do you take care of this earth suit and all that sort of thing? So my goal is that nobody ever needs another doctor again, that you learn how to be uh, uh, you know, do the, do the research. And if a doctor tells you something in the hospital, don't say, okay. Say, great, that's really good. Thank you very much, doc. Now, can you show me the research that you read that allowed you to come to that conclusion? That's not rude. If the guy finds it rude, then tell him to go and then you go leave. Um, 
But anyway, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so anyway, getting back to these these things I was saying about the IL-2. Okay, so if you can do IL-2, IL-12, and if you could do a TA-1, this is fantastic. Then you could use things like GC-MOF, uh, a macrophage activating factor. Um, and then, because um, GC-MOF only works, guys, I know a lot of you could get only works if your macrophages are in the uh, M1 condition. Okay. If your macrophages are the M2, which means they're, they're tumor-associated macrophages, and you wake them up with GC-MOF, they're going to go and uh, help the tumor grow. You don't want that. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so that's, to me, that's immunotherapy. The other thing is immunotherapy. The other big immune therapy is the mind. And, and I got to, and I've to, I told you this before, but I can't, I, I can't stress it enough. Okay. And that is, I've had, I've had, you know, we, we, know, we, 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 we have a lab over here where we can, um, Take someone's blood, we send it to the lab, they spit, they spin out the, um, filter out the natural killer cells, they check to see if they're producing uh, gamma interferon, if they, if they are, they're activated, if they're not, they're not. So if, they, if they're not producing a certain amount, then they're not activated. So if they're not activated, then we give them another sample of the person's blood, and they wake it up with IL-2, IL-12. Then when they're, way, now, now they're, they've expanded, there's, Putting out lots of gamma interferon, then we put them into a growth medium. Not me, we. Uh, it's not my lab. Um, they put it in the growth medium and they expand them out, and you get 10 billion of your own activated natural killer cells that are just. Rah! And then you get an infusion back, and you do this every week. But if that goes into you and you're sad, you're afraid, you're uh, uh, angry, within 12 hours, they're going to be neutralized. 12 hours, 18 hours. It won't last. Remember, you got to learn to turn it off. Okay? Because when you, the thing that stands between us and God is our minds. Because the God, for God, God lives now, here. God in the seat of eternity, which is called now, right? It's never not been now, never will not be now. It's not, okay, now is all there is. There's no then and woulds and coulds. You can't visit now in your mind. You can only experience now. When you stop thinking, you are now in the presence of, you're now present and you're in the now. And you're in the home of God. You're in, so anyway. And guess what happens? That divinity shines through and your immune system goes through the roof. We can measure natural killer cells go up. You want to talk about an immune boost? There's an immune boost. Keep the colon clean, so they, because remember, sixty percent of your immune system is sitting around in your uh, 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 in your uh, GI tract. Even higher, some estimates. I'm talking about all the lymph nodes. I'm talking about Peyer's patches. I'm talking about the spleen. All these things are part of the immune system. They're all in there, and they're all dealing with what you ate and what you didn't eliminate. It's deal your liver. It's, uh, So one of the best things you can do is stop eating and clean it out. And you'll start to, wow, you'll feel better. Wow, I'm on the fourth day of my juice test. I never, I didn't think I'd have so much energy. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so keeping the bowels clean and the mind clean. And what happens is that we are being, remember, remember, divinity runs through every cell. Divinity is the fabric of existence it's the intelligence in all things you just got to get the junk out of the way and it just okay so all right so these things are great il2 il12 um uh, uh, uh ta1 thymus and one gc moth right Oh, the name of the best biological dentist ever in Glendale. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her name is uh, Emma Abrayam. Abrayam. A B R A Y A M. Amazing. Amazing. I'm just answering Dave, David's question here. I think I mentioned it last week. So, anyway, she is ridiculously good, covers more than everything more than everything just unbelievable 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 gum infections that's the thing you know like uh how do you do about gum infections what i would say about gum infections is you get yourself some hydrogen peroxide even the three percent in the uh in the, in the store but get get the food grade because you don't want that chemical they put sodium benzoate or something in it. just get the food grade hydrogen peroxide about three percent there's just do that two, three times a day, three times a day, three times a day. I let it sit there. Your tongue will turn white. It'll fizz. It'll, it's not very much fun. Of course, don't swallow it. Spit it out. You do that, you're gonna, your gums are going to be nothing. And where to get anti-parasite medications? Okay, now, a question always comes up. Niclosam.com. For niclosamide, niclosam.com. N-I-C-L-O-S-I-N.com. Pan cure to get the, the benzimidazoles. Ivermectin, I've heard people get that online from India or uh, or, 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 or China. You know, then, of course, you've got to worry about the quality of it. That's the thing. So if you know somebody who knows somebody in uh, If you know somebody who knows somebody in India where you can make sure you're getting good quality, um, yeah. And China, I don't know if it's possible because I think they do stuff to everything. I don't know. I, I don't know. The, the, I don't know how. Uh, all, all I know is that I don't know. So what can I say? Um, so those are. And then there's one other place, and I forget where it is. There's one. There's one. Somebody was getting four. It's like for a pet. So it might be on the pan cure also. Where they can get uh, it's a combination of prosequantol with with uh, prosequantol with ivermectin. I don't remember, but anyway. So imagine this: you're getting ivermectin. If you can if you can get the niclosamide and you can get the uh, 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 one of the benzimidazoles. That's a big deal. Then you got to get ivermectin too. Yeah. So anyway, that. Um, Sandy, yeah, that is, yeah, no yelling. Interesting, yeah. Well, you know what? Another thing, guys, uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, glad to join you again. Yeah, I'm glad you're all here. So, anyway, uh, uh, what was the thing I was going to say? Was. Yeah, not only not, no yelling. Here's another thing that's very mind blowing about here is that <clears throat> the uh, all the men when they get to some age they have they go uh, uh, rather than necessarily going into military training their first training and plus all their lives they go and shave their heads and go into monasteries and learn to meditate and to serve people and and to be humble and to to uh, uh, ask others for food and things like that. Um, and so what is also not in this society, I mean, glaringly absent from my perspective, because it's one of the things I hated and I still hate. I'm not supposed to hate anything. Well, I guess I'm really well, kind of flawed, far from perfect. I hate machismo. You know, but I, but it's, you know, I don't. I'm not gonna. I don't mind defending anybody. I just don't like the whole machi mind. Mine's bigger than yours. Hey, dude. Well, you know, guys that like to fight that are. You know, it, it, you know, they're always showing their body. Okay, 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 okay. And then the same thing. You know, I have the same thing about uh, women that are doing the, on their feminine side. You know, it's it's not to me. It's not masculine or feminine. Masculine or feminine are qualities that you have um, um, that are subtle 
they're subtle and obvious, you know, um, but when you're over exaggerating them, they're no longer um, real. You know, like somebody who's wearing like on the female side, somebody who wears a lot of makeup, does all kinds of stuff to their hair, has changed their body a lot of ways. Uh, short pants, high heels. I mean, it's like you don't have to do that. And the guys, you know, you have to be like that. So anyway, anyway, there's no machismo. You know, I you, you know, if you're driving down the road, it's night, and you see a bar. Not once in the, in Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Phuket. Not once in eleven years have I seen a fight at the bars. You know, people falling out at the bar. So anyway, there's that. There's an element, whatever that's due to. I don't know what it's due to, but I think um, it's. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I don't know, the humility, they're, they're humble. Everybody, it's called why, everybody why is each other. Um, even the, the, the highest of the high in their society is still going to do this. I like that. They do it in Japan too. Japan, everybody, hey, hey. Same in uh, Korea. Anyway, so let's let's go. Uh, okay, I, I mean, I mean, ivermectin twelve milligrams three times a day, two to three times a day, depending on your size. Fenbendazole two hundred twenty-two milligrams two to three times a day. Nyclozomide five hundred milligrams two to three times a day. Prozacanthal six hundred milligrams two to three times a day. These things are recorded, you guys, so you can always go back and hear them. Okay, so now. You know, and then the IL-2 neutralizes T-regs, too, those regulatory T-cells. Now, where are other questions? We have time? Yeah, we have time. Wow, check it out. Time. What? Okay, so you know what the lymphocyte and natural killer cell panels are, and, not, and you know how to fix them, and you just got to find, and that's the hardest part, finding a doctor who knows anything about this stuff and who's not going to rip you off by charging, overcharging you to do every little aspect of it. You know, that's the problem. I, I want to... Uh, Uh, we're going to make it cheaper here. I have a problem with money, and uh, I'm, I'm told that I shouldn't, but I do. I have a problem with money. I, 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 I just think that when money is between two people, that the relationship is no longer authentic. And of course, you're going to argue with me, and that's okay. Like, uh, you got a good doctor, a good dentist, and they do a good job. They help you out, and you paid them money. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Or the guy down at the street. Money is a form of energy. I get it. I get all that sort of thing. It's on a more subtle level that I really have a hard time explaining. But um, anyway, I just wish we didn't have that third thing. I wish it wasn't a thing that, I wish I could be, you know, the I, the uh, the. I am my brother's keeper. I will help me. I will help. I will help you. I will help you because you need it, and I have it. And not because it's going to get me stuff. That would be, that would be helping. That anyway. Anyway, I'm just too. I'm too weird. So. Forget me. But anyway. Um, so. Okay. Uh, can you comment on cesium chloride? 
plus potassium treatment on metastatic chronically fermenting. Ah, well, Larry, yes. Uh, cesium chloride. Um, there was a doctor. In fact, it's very interesting. First time I ever came to Thailand was, uh, well, not the first time. But the time that I came, when I knew that, that where it became clear to me that I would one day live here was in, uh, I think, 2006 or seven. I had uh, heard about a doctor, uh, a Sarturi, and they called him Ozone, Dr. Ozone. And he had been jailed everywhere, every country, including his, his home country of Germany, uh, U.S., Spain, everywhere. So he was in Chiang Mai, and uh, I paid, to, paid him some money to come and learn from him. Or the day I get there to meet with him, for, we're just sitting down to meet in the morning, right? Um, it was in a hotel. As soon as we sit down, he gets arrested. I visited him a couple times in jail, but that didn't help. I didn't get uh, the training I wanted. Anyway, Dr. Sartori was well known that he would get people who with advanced stage fermenting cells where they were literally days away from passing on and they would fly to him and I don't know how, I don't know how they got him I don't know how they got on the plane but they'd come to him and I mean they were like every one of them was like you know it was just terrible 50% of them he was getting they were going home and they would arrest him for the other 50%. He used direct gas injections of ozone and he used cesium chloride. Cesium chloride is one of the most alkalinizing agents in the world. And it gets to the cells and it can get to the chronically fermenting cells. But it's very, very tricky. You've got to know what you're doing. So now he published a paper. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here, yeah. yeah, here's his paper, 1984. Published in Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior, uh, 1984, Cesium Therapy in Cancer Patients. Anyway, uh, let me see if I can find that. He gave not only cesium chloride, but he gave, you know, uh, you know vitamin C, vitamin A, emulsion, vitamin A, 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 can't take too much, A, but zinc, selenium, and amygdalin, amygdalin, B17, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell that to Sloan Kettering. Amygdalin. How do you like that? Terrible, terrible, terrible. You know if they don't like it, like ivermectin, chloroquine, you know if they don't like those things, that they're good. You know that. And he used uh, the EDTA and DMSO and a few other things like that. But uh, he had 50 patients during the last three years. At the light of that. All patients were terminal subjects with generalized metastatic 47 of the 50 patients studied had received maximal uh, modalities of treatment, including surgery, radiation, and various chemotherapies, okay, before his metabolic therapies began. Three patients were comatose, and 14 of the patients were considered terminal due to previous treatment. According to the individual cases, cesium chloride was given in the daily doses of 6 to 9 grams, in three equally divided doses with vitamin A, emulsion. Now, anyway, I wanted to tell you this one thing. Uh, results, where are the results? Let me just tell you this here. Results. General, uh, you know, so he had breast, colon, prostate, pancreas, lung. Most of them had liver metastasis. He had some primary liver. An overall 50% recovery from cancer by cesium that was in 50 patients, 
50%, published the data. And then he shows this one, uh, he had one study, which I, would, I wanted to find for you, but I can't find it. Uh, but lymphomas, didn't matter what it is, because we're talking, remember cancer biology, cancer is cancer is cancer is cancer. The only difference really is that the, uh, uh, the location and that location determines a lot of other things, like which way it's going to move and things like that. And by the way, if you have never been given, had the spell put on you called a diagnosis of chronically fermenting cells, don't. But know that we've got chronically fermenting cells. So we all need to be doing this. We all need to be doing this. Yeah, anyway. Um, um, anyway, but he, but he does direct gas in, injection of ozone. Which means you got to give the ozone instead of you instead of taking the taking the blood out and putting the ozone in and going like this, mixing it up and then giving it back, which is called major autohemo ozone. Another good way of doing it is just direct gas, but you got to be very careful. You got to know what you're doing because remember, gas air if it gets to the uh, can cause a problem. So this is the king of the ozones. It was actually better than even the you know the the ebo and all that sort of thing. You know, ebo does something else; it filters. But I mean the ten pass and all that, the direct gas. But you got to keep, you got to sit there and just keep doing it. So he would do that, and he would drip the cesium chloride and some other stuff. And you know, fifty percent of the people who would just otherwise have been have passed away within a day or two, got up and were fine and walked on the plane. Liver tumors are this big, strong. I mean, it's you know. So without, what do I think of cesium chloride? Yeah. And but if you read about it, you're going to go on here. Death from cesium chloride. You know, you got to know that's what they do. Death from cesium chloride. Oh, don't green smoothies are bad. Oxalates, all that stuff. You've got to come to know and trust your knowledge. And I'm telling you, if oxalates cause kidney stones, I should just be one big stone now, just a big stone, not even in the shape in the shape of a kidney. That's what I should be. Uh, anyway, it's a good it's a good article to read by Dr. Sartori. And then there are other other people who are trying to prove it and all that because, you know, but anyway. anyway. OK, more questions, you guys. Uh, plus AHCC. AHCC is great, uh, uh, Larry. Uh, this comes from um, shiitake and uh, it is uh, active ingredient, wakes up natural killer cells, wakes up. Uh, uh, T cells are really, really good, but you can get it from other, you can, AHCC is good, but you can get it from other, um, other mushrooms. You know, Agaricus blazii is fantastic. Turkey tail is fantastic. Uh, natto kinase, yeah, absolutely, everybody, natto kinase. Empty stomach, a couple hundred milligrams twice a day, empty stomach, everybody, everybody, keep your blood thin, uh, because your blood's going to get thick. Can a cancer patient do hot yoga while doing non-toxic treatments? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, here's a question from Catherine. Three questions, please. I'm reading advice that cancer patients using alternative th therapy methods should not take synthetic multivitamins and minerals and other supplements. What is your advice about supplements? Number one. Number two, can cancer patients use CBD oil to help with sleep problems? Waking up about 2.30. Is applying Lugol's iodine topically on the breast effective for DCIS? So, synthetic, yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> synthetic um, supplements, no. You don't want synthetic things. You don't, In other words, you don't want it. You know, th you can get most supplements from uh, that are derived from natural substances. Uh, but supplements are very good. We need A, D, C. We need the minerals, selenium, zinc, uh, uh, manganese, molybdenum, magnesium, boron. We need those in excess and vitamin C, A, D, C, okay? And then the iodine, of course. That's it. Mushrooms, yeah, 
mushrooms yeah of course yeah but i'm talking about some and then and then good a good form of mushroom uh and that's it and the only other thing i would say is the um, ma, um is the um, molecular hydrogen tablets and uh that's it. The rest is your feet on the ground and your mouth on the ground. How do you put your mouth on the ground? How do you ground with your mouth? You eat the food that the earth made because the, 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 the plant is a form of earth. It's an earthling like you. And you eat that. And you're going to get life. You're not just getting nutrients. You're getting life. You're getting energy. The argument against it is like, What? What we what 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 should I eat raw food? Huh? All animals do. We somehow got here without eating the cooked for years. Should I eat the food that the earth produces? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Eat food that you get from Jupiter. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. These questions shock me. Molecular hydrogen is... Uh, it's the smallest molecule in the world, in the universe. It's just two hydrogen atoms it goes through all cells it gets into our cells it when it connects with uh binds to a hydroxyl radical which accumulate in our body all the time they're really nasty nasty things turns it into h2o which is called water so they're it's their specific specific antioxidants our bodies make 10 liters of it a day in our gut but you can get it you can get an, a, a, a molecular hydrogen maker or you can just turn it on and get the water and you drink it while it's bubbling. Or uh, I think Dr. Marco Mercola sells it and so do other people sell it. Uh, the the uh, molecular hydrogen tablets where you drop them in the water, like three tablets, and they fizz. As soon as the, the, as soon as the last ones go to the top, you drink it as quickly as you can. You get all that stuff in there. Neutralizes what? And why do we get what increases intracellular hydroxyl radicals big time, causes major problems in our life? What is it called? It's called EMF. It's called Wi-Fi. This is the mechanism by which that stuff damages our cells. Mm. 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 Important to know, right? Uh, let's see. So synthetic, no, get the natural vitamins and only take the ones that I was suggesting. Um, And always remember, when you're getting a supplement, make sure a couple things. You can look at the company, make sure the company can, can certify that everything, that their, their initial ingredients were organic. They have to certify that. And secondly, the, the methods they, which to, they used to process it and produce their product were cold, not hot. So they didn't destroy the enzymes and the life. If you can, if you can have them certify or prove to you that that is what happened, then it's good. It's okay. Then uh, can they use CBD oil? C C uh, CBD is not going to be as much help with the sleep as the THC. Um, and you can get a combination, three to one, four to one, whatever, small amounts. Uh, and that will help you with sleep. Melatonin helps with sleep too, but that's not its main purpose. Melatonin's main, main purpose is to uh, stimulate the immune system and clean up hydroxyl radicals also. But... Um, yeah, and you can use you can use absolutely. In fact, it's not only helps you sleep. Uh, it, it's the uh, THC and CBD. They're good for you. And applying Lugol's iodine topically uh, on the breast for DCIS, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Now, this is from James. Ah, interesting. I was just talking about it. There is immense controversy over whether I eat raw food. Ah, it's not immense. I mean, I, with the controversy over what? Should I eat food or not? What do you call something that humans get a hold of? What, what do we do to things? Huh? What do we do to things? We augment them such that they become what archaeologists call artifact. 
artifact, artificial. Artificial is that which comes from the hands of a human. Nature, natural, is what comes from divinity. Nature is perfect. No trash, no garbage in nature. The rabbit has a bowel movement, it's nourishment for other organisms. No garbage, no trash. When you produce things that are artificial, you wind up with garbage and trash. We are the only garbage and trash producers in the world. When anything comes through our hands, it becomes artificial, meaning it no longer has life. It no longer has biological value. And we are biological entities. I don't think there's controversy. And if there is controversy, it's controversy in people who are not thinking. How could it possibly be that nature and God got it so wrong that by if we it's not healthy for us to eat the food that comes to us naturally? How is that really a is that really a question? Come on. Even understanding that we don't eat animals in the wild, nor do we pick broccoli out of the ground and eat it. Why not? Why don't you pick? And if you're going to eat an animal, eat it alive. Come on. Come on, you're macho. Do it. Eat it. Just grab it. Eat it. Come on. Get that blood, the flesh in your mouth. Eat those ovaries. Mmm. Kidneys. Mmm. Brains. Eyeballs. Get it all. That beating heart. Just drink it up. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Let's be carnivores. So no one, you tell me you're on a carnivore diet. I know you're not on a carnivore diet. And I know that without asking you. Because you're not picking up the animal, ripping its head off, and eating it alive. You might be on a corpse diet, and you're I'll bet you're only eating parts of the corpse, like the muscle. And most likely you're putting it in the, on the grill, and you're putting barbecue sauce on it or whatever. That's a carnivore diet? No. You go look in the go out in the jungle. Go out in the jungle and see if you can find any lions barbecuing. I never saw any. I do not understand how this is still a question. Even oils that are squeezed from an olive are processed. Right. Right. So eat the olive, don't eat the oil. You don't need oils. You need the seeds. You need flax seeds. You need chia seeds. You need hemp seeds. You need nuts. You need nut butters, seed butters, like that. That's where you get your oils with all of the lignans. And by the way, lignans aren't bad for you. Oxalates aren't bad for you. Those guys are disinformation. These is Rockefeller, you guys. So anyway, uh, And it's not raw food. Don't call it raw because raw sounds painful, doesn't it? I wouldn't, you know, if, you, if something's raw, right? Like your hands get raw from working out in the, uh, in the yard or something. Raw or, uh, I don't know. Somebody uh, walking all day and their thigh, they're wearing really short shorts and their thighs are going like this. And they get raw. Anyway, raw doesn't sound really appetizing. Let's just call it what it is. And what is it? It's real food. Why do I say real food? Because the earth made it. And the earth doesn't make artifact. Only humans make artifacts. Artificial. Very simple concepts. Extremely simple concepts. We've got to remember the fundamental basics of reality on this planet and nature.
Doesn't flax seed cause inflammation? No. It's got omega threes and sixes, which are essential. What's that mean? Without them, we're dead. Uh, anyway, listen, uh, Larry. I hope you, uh, was it Larry? No, who was it? James. Yeah, James. I didn't mean. To, I'm not mean to insult you. I'm, 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 what I'm talking about is the is the concept that 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 it's still. Controversial. It's not controversial. I mean, yeah, you can make anything controversial. I mean, is vitamin C controversial? I guess it is still. Even though, what, there are thousands and thousands of published studies and there's been clinical trials, it's still controversial? No, it's not controversial. It's controversial to those who haven't read the read the read the studies. It's not controversial. So don't, 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 don't and don't don't get into that. Now, why do most doctors not advocate this? Well, first of all, they don't know it. But if they knew it, why would they not advocate it? Because that would mean, that would imply that they'd have to change their life. And they don't want to change their life. So a lot of times, too, people are using, they use this kind of reason because they want an excuse. Well, I haven't quite changed my life. They add, because there's too much controversy around it. Don't let that get in the way of saving your life. But by the way, you guys, let me just tell you something. I mean, this is clear, should be clear. And I'm going to say, I said it last week, week before, week before, week before, week before, and I'll say it this week again. And that is health, which is our collective goal, right? Without it, nothing else is of value. Health comes from one. There's only one way to attain health, and that's by living a healthy life. There's not a second way, a third way. There's not a half a new way. You can't buy it. You can't negotiate it. You can't coerce it. You can't steal it. You can earn it. It's just like respect. Health and respect are earned or not, period. In what cases, uh, it, in what cases is chemotherapy required to treat breast cancer? Okay, uh, there are several situations where you want, if you, if you want to, you, you can use chemo. But as I said, you use low dose with insulin so that you don't get all the side effects and you don't destroy the immune system and you don't cause metastasis. If you do high dose, there's never a reason to do high dose. But it's a, if there's a need for chemotherapy, and there are many, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it, it, things you're doing aren't working. Blah, 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 it, it's continuing to grow. Uh, it's painful. It's, you know, there's lots and lots of reasons for it. But you want to use it small dose, low dose targeted. Yep, 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 yep. So there's many, many reasons to do, but low dose targeted with insulin. Huh. You know, I didn't get any of you. Other, I didn't get any of uh, the, the other guys today. Let me let me do. Let me just do at least a couple of uh, Facebook. Is Facebook answering any questions? What did Facebook ask? Uh, this is what would be included in an alkalizing diet. What about alkali alkaline water daily? No. What are the examples of highly alkaline foods? What's recommended? And what are the safe doses of potassium? All right. So anyway, you don't want alkaline water because alkaline water is going right into your stomach and your stomach has to be acidic. So you're going to neutralize your stomach, which is a really bad, bad, bad idea. So you instead you eat green. Anything green has magnesium and magnesium is alkalinizing. So you eat it, drink green juices, whatever, they get absorbed, they go throughout your your body, and wherever they go, they produce alkalinization, they alkalinize, they don't, but they don't do it in the stomach, okay, so that's how you do that. Potassium, you eat a lot of vegetables, you'll get all the potassium you want, all you need, that's all you need, you just eat that, unless you're taking a diuretic, if you're taking a diuretic like Lasix, you know, furosemide or some other 
uh, what they call loop diuretics. If you're taking a loop diuretic, you're going to pee out all the potassium. Then you got to take some potassium. And you got to see whatever it is, you know, 10 milli equivalents, 20 milli equivalents, usually 20, depending on how much Lasix you're taking, you know, it really depends. So, but other than that, you, you'll you get potassium, you'll get magnesium, you'll get all those things if you're eating lots of vegetables. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was asked about exercise during chemotherapy. I always exercise on the day of chemo, but before before and after infusion, is that okay? It helps greatly mentally. I do, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do it. Do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And drink a lot of water and get that stuff out of you as quickly as possible and try to find another way to do it because high-dose chemotherapy is is only bad because it causes metastasis. So find another way. Find somebody who can do things that aren't going to cause harm later on. Very, very important, you guys. Very, very important. Okay. Your goal is not to get rid of the primary tumor. Your goal is to be restored to health. Rose, you're late. Where is it you live? Plenty of fruits. Yeah, yeah. Thailand. Everywhere. Can stress give neutropenia? Not, re not, not really. No. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess, ex you know, like PSTD you know, or something really severe. But I don't. It's probably going to make your neutrophils go up. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't think of the, how that would happen. Um, from Mary Ma, Maria Connell, Connolly. Okay, what kind of meditation do you recommend? Oh, well, um, where you turn off the mind, where you stop thinking. Okay, so that can be either mantra or breath, or listening to breath. But you need, you know, you know the mind is really, you know, you got to give it something to do. Put it on a mantra or put it on a breath, on the breath, and until it becomes, until it's able to hold that completely. And what happens, once it holds it completely, it'll be released. And you'll enter in like what they call uh, in, uh, in India, when they're doing, when you're doing, when you're doing um, mantra med meditation, japa mantra. Uh, you can go through something that's called the Omkar, where you you you, you go because because mantras are just vibratory. They're 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 conditions, they're states of being, like oh, it's not a, it's not like it has a meaning like the word car. But it's got a whole, it's a condition, it's a place of being. And so when you've been doing it long enough, I don't know, you go to that place where it is and i've heard i've not, not been there myself but i've heard that you hear like everyone who's ever been doing it throughout the ages it's amazing so i mean there are tibetan ones like om me hum. Om me you all know that one <clears throat> so imagine you get to the own car there and you hear all these old monks throughout the ages going om me wouldn't that be amazing anyway so there's that, and then just listening to the breath, because the breath is the divinity within you. It's what animates the flesh. It's God within you. And for people that of Jewish, Muslim, or Christian um, um, uh, beliefs, um, the Genesis two, God took Adam. Adam is Hebrew word for uh, earth, breathed into the nostril, and had life. That's life. That's you. And when that breath leaves, this body turns back to earth. It doesn't turn back to France. It doesn't turn back to America. It doesn't turn back to Australia. It doesn't turn back to Thailand. It turns back to earth. We are not these ridiculous subdivisions. We are earthlings. Whoa. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, I guess we're done. I'm sorry I didn't get to all of you. You got there's so many questions. My gosh. Doctor refuses to remove clip left in le left in breast from previous benign biopsy. He said you need a lumpectomy to get it out. You know, uh, Uh, again, do you know how many women have told me that either they were not told that they would have a clip left in or they told them explicitly not to and they did anyway. And then you don't do anything about it. Do it. Call the medical board. Inform consent. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. You got to find a doctor who uh, who's going to get it out for you. I don't know. Green juice. Should I use the mesh strainer or drink it directly? You don't. Green juice doesn't come from a blender. It comes from a juicer, and there are different kinds of juice juicers. But a juicer extracts all the fiber, so it's very different. Okay. So you guys, so what cop? Thank you very much. Uh, See you next week. Thank you very much. And um, sorry, um, I just can't get to them all. But thank you again for joining me.